Transitioning to Hollywood's past, many renowned figures grappled with alcoholism. Elizabeth Taylor, a symbol of beauty and talent, struggled with alcohol and painkillers, admitting herself to the Betty Ford Clinic in 1983. Her brave step inspired countless Americans facing addiction, ultimately shifting societal views on seeking help. Richard Burton, Taylor's ex-husband, also wrestled with heavy drinking. Consuming up to three bottles of vodka per day, his hard partying image became legendary in the 70s. Despite claiming sobriety during filming, his health deteriorated due to cirrhosis and kidney disease, resulting in his untimely death in 1984. Leonard Nimoy, known for portraying Mr. Spock, sought refuge in alcohol amid Star Trek's demanding production schedule. After entering rehab post-filming, he managed his addiction until succumbing to smoking-related complications at 83. Cary Grant tackled alcoholism in the 50s, finding solace in LSD treatments prescribed by his physician. Becoming an advocate for its positive effects, he introduced friends like Judy Balaban to the substance. Although initially skeptical, Balaban credited LSD for changing Grant's perspective on life, allowing him to live peacefully until his demise in 1986. Joan Crawford, PepsiCo CEO's spouse, indulged excessively during promotional tours despite holding a prominent role as the company's ambassador. Meanwhile, Peter O'Toole embraced liquor openly, often appearing intoxicated on sets. His camel ride scene in Lawrence of Arabia remains infamous due to his self-medication with alcohol. Dean Martin's charismatic stage presence and carefree attitude led many to believe that he lived a wild and indulgent lifestyle. However, those closest to him knew a different story. Behind closed doors, Dean Martin maintained a stable home life, far removed from the boozy antics he portrayed in front of cameras. Throughout his career, Dean Martin expertly crafted a public image as a suave, hard-drinking ladies' man. But according to his son Richie, who worked as his assistant during the filming of several movies, the truth was quite different. In reality, Dean Martin preferred sipping apple juice rather than imbibing copious amounts of liquor while working. This revelation underscores just how skillfully Martin played into audience expectations and perpetuated his carefully curated on-screen character. While it may come as a surprise to some, Dean Martin always prioritized balance in both his professional and private lives. Despite frequently playing the part of a lush, he never allowed his acting roles to spill over into his real-life relationships. He made sure to maintain strong connections with loved ones, a feat seldom associated with someone perceived as having a larger-than-life personality fueled by alcohol consumption. Indeed, Dean Martin proved time, and again that one needn't lead a chaotic existence to excel in show business. Instead, he demonstrated that success could stem from dedication, talent, and perhaps most importantly, knowing when to draw the line between fiction and fact. And so, even though audiences saw a hard partying crooner on stage and screen, they can rest assured that off-camera, Dean Martin remained grounded, composed, and committed to preserving harmony in all aspects of his life. Cary Grant, the beloved Hollywood actor known for his charm and sophistication, faced a private struggle during the 1950s, a battle against alcoholism. This period of his life was marked by a turning point when he sought help from an unlikely source LSD therapy. At the time, LSD was being explored as a potential treatment for various psychological issues, including addiction. With the guidance of his doctor, Grant embarked on a series of LSD sessions aimed at helping him overcome his dependence on alcohol. These sessions proved transformative for the actor, who later claimed they had altered his outlook on life. Following his initial treatments, Cary Grant became an advocate for LSD's therapeutic potential and continued to explore its effects. Over the course of several years, he participated in approximately 100 LSD sessions, each one deepening his understanding of himself and broadening his perspectives. The impact of these experiences was so significant that Grant often spoke publicly about the benefits of LSD, attributing much of his personal growth and emotional stability to the substance. Far from diminishing his career, this unconventional approach seemed to enhance it. Despite his advanced age, Cary Grant remained active in film until his retirement in 1966, living a fulfilling life until his passing at the age of 82. Reflecting on Cary Grant's journey, one can't help but admire the courage it took for him to confront his demons and seek help through innovative means. His story serves as a testament to the power of self-discovery and resilience, demonstrating how even those who appear invulnerable may harbor hidden battles beneath their polished exterior. Richard Burton's struggle with alcoholism is legendary in Hollywood circles. 
During the 1970s, he reportedly consumed up to three bottles of vodka daily. This excessive drinking took a toll on both his professional and personal lives. Many people in the film industry were aware of his problematic relationship with alcohol, which often interfered with his work. Despite his talent and charisma, Burton's addiction led him to seek help through several rehabilitation programs throughout his career. Unfortunately, these attempts did not curb his habit completely. Over time, his health began to deteriorate significantly due to complications arising from his chronic alcohol consumption. Both his liver and kidneys suffered irreparable damage, ultimately contributing to his untimely demise at just 58 years old. This unfortunate tale serves as a stark reminder of how destructive addiction can be when left unchecked. Despite being one of the most celebrated actors of his generation, Richard Burton could not escape the clutches of his affliction. It's a tragic story, but also sheds light on the harsh realities faced by those battling substance abuse issues. During the making of the blockbuster hit Jaws, actor Robert Shaw's frequent consumption of Scotch whiskey led to tense relations on set, especially with co-star Richard Dreyfuss. Shaw's drinking habits weren't all bad news though, they actually enhanced some aspects of his performance. The British star, known for his rugged charm and commanding presence, would often show up on set under the influence. This caused friction between him and younger actors like Dreyfus, who found it difficult to work with someone whose behavior was so unpredictable. However, when playing the role of Quint, a hard-drinking sea captain, Shaw's state mirrored his character's condition rather well. His slurred speech and erratic movements added authenticity to the portrayal, making these scenes more believable and intense. Despite the challenges posed by Shaw's drinking problem during filming, he remained a respected figure in Hollywood, with notable roles in films such as From Russia With Love and A Man For All Seasons, Shaw had already established himself as a talented actor before joining the cast of Jaws. Unfortunately, off-camera issues marred what could have been a harmonious production process for one of the greatest thrillers ever made. Leonard Nimoy, best known for his portrayal of Mr. Spock in the iconic TV show Star Trek, struggled with alcoholism during the height of his fame. The pressure of maintaining his character's logical persona and coping with the sudden stardom took its toll on Nimoy. The actor's drinking began as a way to unwind after long days on set, but it soon spiraled into a dependence. As the show gained popularity, so did Nimoy's alcohol consumption. Despite his success, he felt disconnected from himself and turned to liquor as a means to escape. After Star Trek concluded, Nimoy recognized the severity of his addiction and decided to seek help. He entered rehab and received treatment, which marked the start of his journey towards sobriety. Although Nimoy managed to overcome his battle with alcohol, another health issue would later impact him significantly. Sadly, Nimoy had been a smoker for many years before quitting in his 60s. However, the damage was already done. In 2014, he revealed that he had been diagnosed with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease caused by cigarette smoke. After a lifetime of acting and directing, including roles in Mission Impossible and Fringe, Nimoy passed away due to COPD complications in 2015, aged 83. Nimoy's legacy lives on through his work, particularly as Mr. Spock, a character whose influence transcends generations. Yet, behind the Vulcan ears and stoic demeanor lay a complex man who faced personal challenges, ultimately demonstrating resilience despite adversity. Renowned for her striking beauty, and exceptional acting skills, Elizabeth Taylor led a life marked by both professional success and personal struggles. Born on February 27, 1932, in London, England, she began her film career at the tender age of nine. Over the years, she captivated audiences with her powerful performances in movies like National Velvet, A Place in the Sun, and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Her talent earned her two Academy Awards for Best Actress, cementing her status as a Hollywood icon. However, Elizabeth Taylor's life wasn't solely defined by her accomplishments on screen. Behind the glamour and fame, she faced significant battles with alcoholism and addiction to painkillers, which lasted for decades. These challenges often overshadowed her achievements and left a deep impact on her health and relationships. In 1983, Elizabeth Taylor made the courageous decision to confront her demons when she checked herself into the renowned Betty Ford Clinic. At the time, seeking help for addiction was still stigmatized, particularly among celebrities. By publicly acknowledging her need for treatment, Taylor took a groundbreaking step towards changing societal perceptions of addiction and recovery. 
Her admission to the clinic proved instrumental in encouraging other high-profile individuals to seek help for their own substance abuse issues. Furthermore, it sparked conversations around addiction, ultimately leading to increased understanding and support for those grappling with these challenges. Throughout her journey, Elizabeth Taylor remained steadfast in her commitment to helping others overcome their addictions. In doing so, she transformed her personal struggle into something positive, leaving behind a legacy that continues to resonate today. Indeed, her influence on public attitudes towards addiction treatment and recovery remains one of her most lasting contributions. After tying the knot with the CEO of PepsiCo, Joan Crawford took on a new role beyond just being an actress. She became Pepsi's official ambassador. This meant embarking on global tours aimed at promoting the soft drink giant. However, it was during these promotional trips that Crawford's penchant for imbibing substantial quantities of different types of alcohol came to light. Known for her demanding nature, Crawford would reportedly request copious amounts of various libations throughout these journeys. Her taste seemed insatiable, leaving many around her astonished by the sheer volume of alcohol consumption. While one might expect a company representative to abstain from activities potentially damaging to their image, Crawford defied expectations. Her behavior raised eyebrows amongst those who witnessed it firsthand. Despite serving as a public figure representing PepsiCo, Crawford didn't shy away from exhibiting her drinking habits openly. Such displays were unusual considering societal norms and professional etiquette expected of individuals in such positions. Yet, Crawford remained unapologetic, continuing to indulge herself without reservation. This aspect of Joan Crawford's life often overshadows her illustrious career spanning several decades. An accomplished actress, she had made a significant mark in Hollywood before becoming involved with PepsiCo. Regardless, stories of her excessive drinking have become ingrained in her legacy, presenting a complex picture of a woman whose personal choices sometimes clashed with her professional responsibilities. Michael Landon, best known for his roles on television shows like Bonanza and Little House on the Prairie, had a surprising struggle behind closed doors. Despite his squeaky clean image on screen, he privately battled addictions to both alcohol and Valium throughout much of his adult life. This fact remained largely hidden from the public eye, known only to those closest to him. As it turns out, these struggles may have played a role in Landon's untimely passing at just 54 years old due to complications from pancreatic cancer. While medical professionals cannot say for certain whether substance abuse directly caused his illness, many suspect it could have weakened his immune system, making him more susceptible to disease. Throughout his career, spanning several decades, Landon endeared himself to audiences around the globe with his charismatic performances and heartfelt storytelling. Yet even amidst all the accolades and admiration, he grappled with demons that threatened to derail his personal and professional lives. In hindsight, one wonders how different things might have been if he'd received help sooner rather than later. But alas, we will never know what could have been. What remains clear, however, is the indelible mark left by Michael Landon, not only through his work, but also through the lessons learned from his private battles. Perhaps his story can serve as a reminder that appearances can often deceive, and everyone carries their own set of burdens, regardless of fame or